Okay, get on them. All right, first shark, shark hook up behind a shrimp boat. Oh, yeah. It took about 2.3 seconds. Okay, got one on, right of passage, first thing in the summer. Come on. <laughs> we don't know if he's a monster or not. He's pulling it. He's pulling, but they, he, some of them monsters jump. Oh, he's wanting to get back to that shrimp boat. He don't want the, the rest, the restaurant is, is, is pulling away. The restaurant's leaving. This dinner, his breakfast is leaving. All right, this is what nobody wanted to do for the last three weeks, and we finally get out here. Got a stiff 15 knot southwest wind, and only one shrimp boat, the Jennifer Ann. Ooh, that's a little like a shark. I just seen the top Yep, of yep. All right, I'll get back with you when we get them closer. It's not a, it's not a hundred pounder, but it's a good one. It's a good starter. All right, here's number one. Nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> All right, we got just a little feller on now. He's gonna put this thing to the boat quick. Let's see, he might run. <laughs> he might run. Let's see if can get rid of him. Should be able to. And I lost my bait. God damn it! There it is. All right, no worse for the wear. <laughs> All right, we got one on. You ain't going nowhere. Got one on. Shrimp boat's way over yonder. This one bit as I was reeling it in to check the baits. He was probably already testing it. And <laughs> you surprised him. These are my star rods with the anti-foul guides. Ooh. It would take, take a damn truck to break one of these son of a guns. What was it last year? I had two ugly stick jigging rods broke within the week. And I said, I'm done with that. So now I went to the stars. Ugly Stick used to make rods like this called Ugly Stick Customs and they stopped making them. Ugly Stick stopped making a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Years ago, they were great, man. That's yep. how they got their name. Yep, they were so much better. You hear that ugly stick? You're sucking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we haven't gotten our hundred pounder yet. This is about like kind of the last last black tip we had. Dogs out! 
All right, I discussed this before. I'm taking my 90 pound Surflon cable and you loop it, loop it, loop it around and then you make your crimp. In case it breaks, it'll cinch down and you'll still get that shark or fish or whatever to the boat. So hold on a second. And here's a prime example. We just got that shark to the boat. Okay, come on. We got that shark to the boat. And if you can all see that, it broke up here by the crimp, of course. And then it cinched down so damn tight onto the hook, we still got that shark to the boat. That's impressive. Catamaran, I'll see daddy said, man, you always do that. When you're using this flexible cable, that's how you're going to get him to the boat. Because he said, you never know what the hell's going on here. You crimped it, you could have done everything right. You can only crimp it so hard. And I use the proper size crimps and everything, and it still will happen. Many sometimes lose their teeth or whatever. So that's a lesson learned right there, folks. It's happened to me before. But that's a stereotypical. Look at the difference. See this, Stephen? Pretty cool. That's what you do. And that was a lesson to be learned right there. And you still, we still got that son of a gun kicking around all over the place to the boat. Oh, yeah. He was fighting hard. All right. All right. Pro tip. All right. We may have a big one on this time. He's been out there for quite a while, and he did the old corkscrew jump across the top of the water. Okay, we're in for the uh, long haul here on this dude. He might be foul hooked because way out behind the boat, he jumped and corkscrewed. And sometimes they get that leader wrapped around their body or the hook comes out of their mouth and stabs them somewhere down here. Because now he's lurking just down on the bottom. And these rods are stiff. And you can put the muscle to them. We see our bait, the bait, I was using a half a mullet, slid up the leader. We see the bait, but that doesn't mean that, that, that he's anywhere near the bait. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what this shark's situation is. <laughs> yeah, a little at a time. We're kind of going down sea now. I don't want him getting underneath the boat. Oh man. Whew. <laughs> he didn't like coming up that close. where the hook is he's doing circles so that means he's probably not has the hook in his mouth he's just doing the, the death spiral circles there he is if you can see him and the bait is sliding up and down the line and he's caught in his peck fin or something he's not caught in the mouth and that's what that's what takes so long 
We're at least seeing him now. I think we either got him in the belly or his fin. I don't think it's in his mouth. Yep, it's in his peck fin. It's in his peck fin, right at the base of his peck fin. There he goes. It's right in the base of his peck fin, so we are not. Hi, I got a picture of him. We, we are not gliding. We are not guiding to Clydesdale by his by his bridle. Yep. Foul hooked for sure. Foul hooked 100%. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Can you swing around? Uh-oh, no, he just caught around something. He just got caught around something. Okay, now he's caught around the back of the boat. Folks, I'm sure you got it on the video or on the, on the audio. He just went completely around the edge. doing the Wicked Tuner. Folks, 
this is what we're dealing with. Okay, one more time like that. Okay. Even if you have to, if, even if you have to step back, you go back. A big old belly on him. This is a big one. Okay, there he is. There he is. He's hooked right in the, right in the meat at the base of the dorsal, or at the pectoral. There he is. I can almost get that hook out. Ah! Whoa. Holy shit, I was about to take my fingers off. I could almost get it with this if I could just get a hold of them again. So there it goes again. Woo! Dog! Oh, uh, I mean, those don't help. Okay, one more time like that, I'm gonna have this thing in my hand. I thought I had to cut it, maybe. I think I could pop them just as easy. And then you get this hook and this leader and the souvenir. <laughs> Woo. All right, a little bit closer. Oh, oh shit! Come on, come on. He doesn't have much gas left. Though. Yeah. He's almost done. He's almost done. You think this son of a bitch be 500 pounds the way he's at? Crap! That's what happens when you foul hook him. Yeah, who says my rigs ain't strong? <laughs> Almost. Look at that swivel. That's a little tiny swivel. It's like 200 pound swivel. Okay, here we go. No, 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 no! No! I'm gonna keep his head up. give up in an absolute minute when they foul hook one like that. Woo! Alright. And we got the, the hook out of the shark too. When they jump, they twist like a corkscrew. And many times that a hook will come out of their mouth and it runs down and it jabs the first thing it can. I've had them dorsal, dorsal fin hooked, tail hooked, right in their peck fin. This dude was right in his armpit. Yeah. As if he had an arm. If, if a shark has an armpit, that's where he was hooked. Am I trying to be nice to the sharks if I can? They give us a thrill, you know. All right. Pack up your squeeze toys, Farfel. You're going to the town. Net cam. Okay, follow them around if you have to. Net cam, net cam. Big red fish on a pogey. Come on. Net cam. Okay, swing on over here. Yeah, net cam. Whoa, we slapped. Freaking slapping the net cam. <laughs> We go from sharking. Here, hold the rod still. Well, you'll get you'll get plenty. You get you'll get a chance. I got to unhook them here. God damn. Yeah. I mean, every time something screws up, I got to do a lot of editing. Oh, he done swallowed it. It was hard to tell if he was on. I know. He was coming right to the boat. Come on, stop it. Oh, see, he thought he was going to the Pogi restaurant. Now he's going to the Periodonist. Ready? There you go. Okay, hold him on up. Let's see. I can't read that. Can you read it? 
Okay. But, uh, that's the pounds, right? Yeah, that's so pounds. It's uh, eight and a half pounds. Out in a half, out eight and a half pound red basses. He's a junkyard dog. Okay. Right. Now let's see how long he is. Put his nose right up here on the official redfish measuring board. And of course, you pinch his tail, and he's well over 28, almost 29 inches. So that means, wah, 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 not a keeper. Now I gotta be a 27. Right? Yeah, under, under 27. He sure would. Thanks, State of Florida, for being a bunch of idiots. They, don't like, they should expand it to about 30 inches, really. All right. Red bass on a pogey. We got pogies, but I didn't film it. Plan came together. Alright, we're heading in. The clouds are getting black. We caught our red fish. Now it's time to go home. Yep. Finished up. And no sooner got in the old driveway under the boat port. And here it comes raining. I'm glad we didn't have to mess with everybody running in for a kingfish tournament today at the boat ramp. And we got to the boat ramp nice and easy, put the boat on the trailer and cruised home. And now as soon as I get home, now it's storming. That's the way it's supposed to be done. <laughs>